Welcome back to Monster Hunter Try. I'm Zachary Chalkum, your faithful host. And this beginning part is slightly sped up because it's more of a, uh, a, uh, what am I looking for? It's more of a setup point. This, here at the beginning, I'll show you how to make, uh, Sleep shots, as well as a tranquilizer, which would be a nitro shroom, or a, a para shroom, and a sleep herb, which gives you a tranquilizer. A huskberry and sleep herb give you sleep shot, and level one. And sleep herb plus raw meat gives you drugged meat, which you can use on, say, like the great jaggy. Now we will be using the sleep shot. There would be a speed combo, so you can just go to that and make this sleep, or you can make whatever you need to when you get to it. And we're going to be doing the Coral Peco today, if it wasn't obvious. If you didn't listen to the last episode. So, to start this off, we're going to start off with the Heavy Bowgun, because it might be slightly better than uh, without the Heavy Bowgun, or with the light bowgun because it is the hunt quest so you don't necessarily have to capture it so having a higher powered gun on this one would be better because you don't know exactly if you're going because if you take it just a little bit too far you'll still be okay uh... pin tuna I'm just gonna go through a couple of the uh... of the... certain uh, combos, just making combos. This isn't going to be the combo montage. At some point, I will do the combo montage. Showing almost everything that you can make. There'll be a few things that I won't be able to make for a really long time. But I'll just go down and make everything at some point. Buy plenty of large barrels. That's to make large barrel bombs. Uh, don't need the mega bug net for this. Large barrel bombs. First, you need gunpowder. So that's fire herbs and nitro shrooms. You make gunpowder. Then you combine that that gunpowder with uh, gunpowder would be the thing that's kind of oddly shaped. You combine that, uh... I'm gonna go with the Badamer set here, by the way. Gives you a little bit better with status effects, which we'll be using with the Heavy Bow Gun a lot. Uh... I thought I had Scatterfish. I guess I haven't gotten that yet. Um... This is the set that I'd be using. The uh, Jaggy Armor really does nothing except for defense. Uh, the Benamber Armor gives you status attack up, reload plus one, reload speed plus one, and uh, you get auto guard from from the auto guard charm that I have on because I don't really have any other good charm at the moment. <sighs> Alright. I don't remember if I ate earlier, but... Regardless, we're going to start with the quest right now. Alright, you're going to need the cold drinks, probably. 
bring the map just for you viewers. Paintballs. They give you crack shots, so if you didn't bring some of your own, you can keep it. You're going to need the sonic bombs and the dunk bombs. Um. Now, if you're one of the uh, knowing about uh, what am I thinking of? If you played Freedom Unite and you've played against Yon Kutku or any of the other bird wyverns. Uh, this fight will be fairly familiar to you. And just about any fight that I do where I'm going to use lots of status ailments, I'm going to start out with poison. Because poison's one of those things you just kind of want to get off at the beginning. Normally when you fight the Coral Pekko, like any other time after the first time, you'd find him in Area 4, unless you take way too long. Hmm. Oh right, because we're not actually going to fight the Coral Pekko right now. So the Pierce Shot will help. The Great Jackie, what is he doing here? Yeah, that would be the Coral Pekko. This is where you need the cool drinks. Yes, so they le the Coral Pekko leaves you to fight the Great Jaggy here from the beginning. So if you haven't had enough of the Great Jaggy, you can have some more. The Coral Pekko has a uh, certain ability that not many other monsters in the series possess, where it'll actually uh, be able to call other monsters to help it. For one, it can call the uh, Great Jaggy to come help it, which may or may not be too bad. Now, just because I don't want really any more bothers than there needs to be, I'm gonna take out the Great Jaggy here. Instead of the Coral Pekka can call the Great Jaggy later, which can be rather annoying. And yes, I have fought the Great Jaggy enough that I know exactly how far that lunge is going to go. It's what happens when you fight him like seven or eight times just because he will not give you his king's frill. And just look how powerful that gun is now. No problem. Great Jaggy and Dulux. Uh, Dulux. 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 I might better pronounce. As you can see, this slightly goes to the left. This gun, at least. That is because of the frame and the barrel, which does not stop the deviation. But the, uh, heavy bow gun. As a, where did you guys come from? As a, a slight hit to the left. As you can tell, when it's on low, a low hit or a low deviation to the left, it's not that much. It's not very noticeable. If you get it up to high, then it is quite noticeable, and you really do have to plan ahead with it. With low, you can still basically aim it directly at the monster, and it will be fine. Now, 
let's find that Pecco. Oh, he's actually coming here. How nice of you, Quiro. There are many different names for Quiro Pecco. Uh, Pecco, Disco Chicken, um, Dancing Chicken, Green Thing, Big Bird, Stupid Chicken, you know, stuff like that. There's a fair bit of them, so I may use different ones depending. But this is an example of his, uh, calling some other monster. If you're good, like I am at this game, or just played it way too much, I didn't really mean to make that sound kind of snide, saying good at this game like I am. I meant, like, that's not exactly the phrasing that I wanted to use. If you've played this game as long as I have, you would know which cries the Crow Pecco can use. That one was the Renopolos. As you can see, there were not Renopolos here before, and now there are. Always remember, if you're using a bow gun and it has a shield, use the shield. It's a lot better to use the shield and have it fail. What am I doing? Oh. You can stun the Coral Pecco out of something by uh, using a sonic bomb when it has its throat sack, or its, uh, I don't really know what to call that. Um, its chest puffed out. So it's very good to try to, uh, explode at the beak. Now, crack shots. Crack shots are kind of a weird, uh, ammo. They do, like, normal damage based on its impact into the monster, the initial hit. So it works kind of like a normal shot. But then, it also works, it has explosive damage, which does a set amount of damage, and then it also has slightly fire damage. Now if it hasn't been obvious yet, I don't think it's actually used its flint crack yet, uh, but the Quirrell Pecco is essentially your first fire monster that you run into. Because of that, the fire damage that the crack shots do isn't very effective. Cha cha, go away, go away, no, stop, stop. Thank you. Alright, here's an introduction to, uh, large barrel bombs. <laughs> Hopefully this doesn't take too long to reload and I can actually use it. Barrel bombs do a set amount of damage, but only do the damage, uh, do a set amount of damage to the monster no matter where it hits. But where it hits depends on what it's going to, if it has any part of breaking. The beak has parts of breaking, the two flint stones on the wings for the growth echo has parts of breaking. I don't think I get quite all of them in this one, but I might. Um, also there you had the first introduction of sleep bombing. It's a tactic that I will be using, and many bow gunners use a lot. The uh, reason to do that is because sleeping a monster, when it, a monster is asleep, the next attack that hits it will uh, make a... will uh, be double damage. So using large barrel bombs to hit it, to make it explode, does a lot of damage. There's another one a little bit later that you can use that does even more, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Now one thing to note, if you're going to try to sleep bomb a monster, do not hit the monster with every kind of shot that you're using. As you saw there, I kind of aimed off and grazed the bombs, which caused them to explode. Which then the bombs counted as the first hit, not the shot. Here, I can still get off. Some fire. Ow. Which is really bad because I am wearing fairly fire weak armor. If you have fire blight, which is what I have right now. Uh, it causes a little bit of damage over time. If you roll around three times on normal air, you get, uh, you do normal damage, or you do, you get it off, or if you roll once in water, it also works. Chacho, what are you doing? Okay, just don't attack him. 
I still didn't break his peak. Yeah. Let's see what else is there to say. He's already weak, but that's mainly because we've been blowing him up. I'm kinda mad that his beak's not broken. Best way to break a Koropeko's beak is essentially use pellet shot. Uh that I know I'm an advocate of pellet shot. I want to use it basically all the time. It's my favorite ammo type for the bowgun, essentially. But I know I say pellet shot's fairly good. Pellet shot is one of the best ways to break the crow peco's uh, the beak of the crow peco, because most of the shots from the from the uh, pellet shot, for whatever reason, actually hit the head more than anything. Now if you want to break the wings, you'll have to use something else that directly targets them. Because as you can see there, most of it hits either the head or the body. I don't know why. That's one thing you have to learn about with the uh, bowgun. You have to learn how to, uh, what ammo types are the best for whatever you're trying to do. But I would have to say for breaking parts on monsters, the bowgun is definitely the best at doing that. And that would be a Maylinx, uh, oh, too late. Maylinx summoning, which is very, very mean. But the Koropeko tends to like to do that. Let's see, and the Great de this isn't the Great Desert, this is the Sandy Plains. In the Sandy Plains, the Koropeko likes to summon Maylinxes here, Ornopolos, and uh, Jaggies in four, Ornopolos in a lot of places, uh, Maylinxes in ten. He can summon big monsters like the Great Jaggy, um, and another one later, which we'll get to in the next episode. Um, but essentially I think that's it. So let's see, he always comes in the same area, I just didn't remember where it was. Let's see if we can't pitfall trap him. And get that beak. More than anything, if you're a gunner, uh, the beaks are what you're looking for. If you're not a bow gunner, uh, you're looking for possibly, I don't know, let's see. If you're not a bowgunner, beaks are really not what you're looking for. And we got the beak, we got the beak. Now it's kind of broken up there, that's when you know it's broken. So there we go, we got the beak, and we can carve the great, the great peco. The great peco, there's a normal peco and a great peco. No, uh, the coral peco. I feel like I've been talking a lot during this, but this is one of my videos, so it makes sense. You're also going to want scales. The game likes to give you feathers, but you're going to want scales. And that was 14 minutes, but that was also because I fought the Great Jaggy as well. So... Next time we'll be doing the... I think we're doing uh, a medium bowgun. I may be wrong, but I think it's a medium bowgun. So I will see you next time for the uh, capture quest of the great... of the Crow Peko next time. And we did get our beak. Nice. We also got a charm. We also get rewards from the great Jack. So, it's just a whole bunch of splendor, isn't it? Ah, combo plus, that's not that good. And remember, have fun gaming. I'll see you next time.